Hello friends, it's Robert Stelick with Blue Planet Surf. This is a report on foiling in Berlin. I was just in Berlin for two weeks and I was there for a class reunion of our, uh, the John F. Kennedy School. I went to the John F. Kennedy School in the 1980s. I graduated in 1987 and we had a big reunion of all the 1980s uh, classes in Berlin. Thank you so much to Marla and Manuel for organizing it. It was an excellent party. It was really cool to connect with our old friends and uh, just reconnect and see my old school friends again and party together. We also had a family reunion. Uh, my mother still lives in the house where we grew up in Berlin. My two sisters traveled from Colorado and South Africa to be there and our, uh, my nieces, nephews, cousins, uh, all kind of family came. We celebrated a wedding for Tony, my, my nephew, and da Dana, so that was really nice. And then I was able to go wing foiling on the Migosee and watching pump foiling on the Hafe. You might have thought that foiling is not a big thing in Berlin because it's far away from the ocean, but there are a lot of lakes and there is a foiling scene in Berlin. So here is my report on foiling in Berlin. So first of all, getting from Hawaii to Berlin is a long trip. It's over 20 hours of traveling, 12 hours of time difference. Uh, it's pretty much on the other side of the world. So it took quite a while to get there. Uh, the first stop um, for the foiling report was at Nalani Subsurfing. Um, the owner, Patrick, invited me over there. They're right at the Mügelsee, which is the largest lake in Berlin. It's on the southeastern side of the city, and there's a nice sandy beach there, and they have the stock with a, a jumping tower, and then also uh, the SUP school, um, the Nalani SUP Surfing Center, which is Patrick's business, and then next door they have an e-foil school, and um, the guys there, Dan, the owner, was uh, kind enough to let us use some wetsuits and he also came out on the e-foil boards to film us and uh, you know e-foiling is a great way to get into foiling so if you've never tried it um, learning on an e-foil board is a really good way to get used to foiling and this is the owner band um, and then this is the Nalani sub center right next door where he rents out stand-up paddle boards and then the owner, Patrick, also loves to wing foil. He also does wing foiling lessons at the lake. And uh, my daughter and niece uh, wanted to try winging as well for the first time. So Patrick was nice enough to let us use his big stand-up paddle boards that have a center uh, fin or center dagger board to keep you from drifting off so they could try it. And uh, he's letting us use all his nice equipment. He has some Blue Planet boards there as well. And he also ha has a Blue Planet alien wing that he let me use. So thanks, Patrick, for, for your generosity and letting us um, use all your nice gear there. So the big stand-up boards are a great way to learn how to do the wing handling. Here you can see how the wind is a little bit further out, close to the shore. It wasn't very windy, but then further out on the lake, there was a pretty good amount of wind. So we were pumping up the wings, getting ready. Uh, get ready to go out and there's uh, my my niece Emily and my daughter Jamie uh, They we pumped up some four meter wings for the girls and a five meter wings for Leo So i um, getting everything ready the board. I was using it was a gong uh, 60 liter board so I, I was using the big wing the seven meter alien wing Which was good because I needed a little bit more power to get going on that low volume board and then the foil I was using is the 1550 Armstrong wing. So there's Jamie and Emily trying it out for the first time. That's Patrick with the wing. I uh, gave them some pointers um, and Emily and Leo had tried windsurfing before so they kind of figured out the wing f handling pretty quickly. Uh, Jamie it took her a little bit longer and here's uh, young Tavi showing us how, to, how he um, dock starts off the dock with his little board. Uh, him and Johannes have a uh, business called cityfoilers.de where they teach people how to dock start. So if you're interested in learning how to dock start in Berlin, uh, there you got a few options there. So once we got out on the lake, 
the wind was pretty steady in the middle of the lake. It was fun to ride with a um, powerful wing. Here's my daughter on the left with uh, kind of figuring it out. Uh, it took a little bit of instructions. At first she got frustrated and went ended up going straight downward for a while, but then she figured out how to go kind of back and forth and staying uh, staying uh, upwind or, or at least not drifting downwind so much. And there's um, Johannes um, winging also with, with me. And then uh, it was Bant on, the, on an e-foil filming us with his GoPro. So that was cool. Thank you, Bant. And then while we were coming back, he had already um, edited the, the video for us and, and gave me this nice file with everything already pre-edited and so on. So that was really cool. And, and if you learn how to wing foil from them, uh, I mean, sorry, if you learn how to uh, e-foil from them, they will um, also do video and you can take home a video of your foiling session. So that's pretty cool. Um, and, you know, e-foiling is definitely a good way to learn or just to, to get used to the hand, uh, handling of the foil underwater and getting used to balancing on the foil and so on. So um, I think e-foiling or wing foiling is probably the easiest way to, to learn how to foil. Uh, especially if you have uh, some wind sports experience already and you know how to handle a wing uh, or like windsurfing or kiting, then uh, wing comes pretty easily, I would say. If you never um, practiced uh, or if you've never done any of those sports, I would definitely first try it on a, um, on a windsurf board or a stand-up board with a center board. But um, Johannes had a smaller wing than I did, but he also had a little bit bigger, floatier board, so that made it easier for him to start. And here's Bant with the e-foil board and the camera uh, following us and filming us. And then Patrick came out with the boat. Um, definitely good to have a boat because the wind kind of blows offshore or away from the sub-center. So uh, as a beginner, usually people end up going downwind and then uh, needing a ride back. So then that's where that boat comes in really handy. So you can just pick people up. Here's our cameraman. Dan, thanks so much for putting the little video together. Uh, good stuff. So we really enjoyed our day at the Miguelzee. And then later in the afternoon, the wind kind of got lighter. And we came back to the sub center. And Johannes and Tavi gave us a little demo of their uh, dock starting and pumping skills. And they also offer uh, pump foiling lessons right there at the Migrose. And the uh, website is cityfoilers.de. So that's a cool option for learning to pump foil if you're in Berlin. So overall, we had a really nice day over there at the Migrose. Um, You know, the water's warm. It was a nice summer day, a little bit overcast. But we had good wind and uh, great people there. Uh, what a wonderful place to get on the water. Um, you know, even has a little beach right there. You can get food and uh, all kinds of fun stuff to do there. And uh, I, I guess because it was a little bit overcast, there weren't that many people swimming or in the water. But a uh, beautiful spot to stand a paddle as well if you, if you go there on a nice sunny summer day. So thanks for showing us around there, Patrick. And then the next day, I went from the Mügelsee to the Hafe. So the Mügelsee is kind of on the south eastern side of Berlin and the Hafe is more on the southwestern side of Berlin, so kind of the opposite end of Berlin. And uh, that's where Leonard um, Steve has his foil club Berlin. And I met up with him there on a Saturday and he was out there um, on his foil with a friend, uh, dock starting from a ladder. They, uh, they couldn't use the dock on the weekend, so they're using the ladder. And uh, I did a little interview and watched him uh, foil for like over 10 minutes, going back and forth, catching boat wakes one way, pumping to another boat, catching wakes the other way. So, so what's your secret to um, pumping efficiently? Yeah, I would say for the one part, uh you have to have like a, a good type of condition and strength to uh, yeah, accelerate the foil. But there's a lot of uh, technicality to it. For example, when I started like almost until like a month ago or two months ago, I used to make a similar, similar pump every single time. Um, and there are a lot of guys who covered it, like Dominic Hoskins, for example, who have like some, some great technique uh, videos about it. 
But uh, with this foil I found for myself, the most efficient way to pump it is basically to give it one huge pump and then another really tiny one. Um, so that and then like, you kind of try to stay high. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then keep the keep the foil as as low under the water surface as possible, as this ground effect kicks in, and then it's way more efficient. Yeah, yeah. So that's kind of like the. Always, if you hear the horn, it basically means the ferry is gonna run into some some small boat or whatever because they, they don't break here. So watch uh. out for that. Um, <laughs> yeah, but this keeping it close above, close under the water surface is really key. Yeah. And also in the small boat rakes, if you have to foil like in a position like this, it's really risky to fall out, but uh, the rake will have enough power to keep you pushing. Mm. Right? So if the foil goes super deep under the water, um, you will need a way bigger rake to keep accelerating you. So that's kind of uh, the struggle in between keeping it uh, as close as possible to the water surface without breaching it at any point because yeah, I mean, some guys might do it, but I mostly don't recover from it. So, yeah, it's kind of a gamble. <laughs> yeah, yesterday at the Miggelsee, we we had some sea, I had some seaweed that got stuck on the foil. Did you have that problem here sometimes? Yeah, you, you have like, that a lot. Yeah. Actually, the, the cool thing about this spot is you have a lot of people swimming in here, going in and out. Uh, yeah. So they basically destroy the seaweed. Oh, uh, okay. If you go like 30 meters this direction or the other one. Oh, yeah. um, you have so much of the seaweed and I think it's water roses, Wasser Rosen of Deutsch. Yeah. Anyway, a lot of them and as soon as you keep running into them, they stall you down. And then another really annoying part is, especially the seaweed, um, it goes all over the lake and then it's always in, I don't know, it's clumps. So on. Yeah, yeah. In clumps, exactly. And then if you're in, in some type of a wake, like somewhere close to the sides of the lake and you don't see it, you run into it. It com completely blocks your ride and you fall off wondering like what happened, but yeah, it's mostly seaweed. And then it's a and long paddle back. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah. I see, an and I see another big boat out there. Yeah, <laughs> unfortunately those, those big ones, they're type yeah. of efficient. They go fast without making a wake. Oh, they're not so, good for, for surfing, huh? Yeah, exactly. Okay. We, we like those which uh, waste fuel and... Uh, <laughs> the the BVG ferry is a good Yeah, one. exactly. <laughs> the best one is to uh, put some of us a taxi. Yeah. But, so, yeah. so you, last year you sent a video of um, the, you foiling. Um, that was that the the Vasa taxi. Yeah, yeah that was, was the Vasa taxi. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. And and what was the longest ride you had behind the foil, uh, behind the boat, or like on yeah, just the, on the, the lake? Yeah, the longest one until now was last weekend, and it was almost 30 minutes, so 29 point something. Um, and it wow. was a total of six boats, um, like going this direction, this direction, this direction. As uh, if you always taking a risk because if you go too far this side and uh, you won't make it back um, because the, the lake is just huge and you don't want to swim and then it's a real pain but sometimes you have to take a bit of the risk to, to catch the chance that another boat is going to come the other direction yeah and um, but then it's also sometimes again that the boats sometimes they get faster if they're allowed to then the wake is gone and sometimes they get too slow and yeah you have to you have to be lucky to catch multiple wakes in the way but that's like 29 and a half minutes about was the record so now today i had 10 minutes and i have it filmed yeah because last week and i was so pissed at myself that i didn't brought my gopro and uh, now i at least have evidence footage of 10 minutes from 10 today minute, right okay <laughs> yeah and, uh, i'm gonna try to get that footage from you yeah, yeah. we're always joking about like you guys have the malaiko one like this this epic downwind and it's basically impossible to make a downwind i mean the lake has maybe two kilometers fetch in this this direction so even if we had like 50 knots of wind the chop would be this high so not but not that's actually enough to to downwind for if you use it efficient, efficiently i think yeah, yeah it could no? be yeah but it's that uh, the the chop here is really like small wave to wave to wave mm -hmm. and it's close together but still that's yeah. sometimes it's the best kind of like if it's short it's slower waves you know so they yeah. need, i don't know but yeah, yeah. Yeah, but, but but anyway, we have the the uh, Hackeshorn, Tiefes Horn one here, and that's like five minutes. If you follow about around this direction, you can yeah. get out again and walk the way back. So, so Leo, tell us more about like um, riding the boat wakes. How you know? Is there any tricks to um, staying on the wake or getting on the wake, and what kind of wakes do you look for, and so on? Yeah, definitely. Like first of all, I think spotting the wakes is pretty important. Like as you can see, this is like pretty, pretty difficult as the, as the rakes are pretty small on the lake. Um, so you want to look for boats which are not planing, like close to planing. And the bigger the boat, the better basically. Like a yard like this one over there, 
will probably produce a, a foilable rake. Um, and sometimes it's just a gamble of, of getting out and uh, hoping that the rake is big enough. Do you, and, do you usually ride the one or try to ride as close as you can to the boat or further back or which, um, which wake would, do you try to get on? I would definitely suggest to go for the second wake. Like for big boats, like if this one accelerates and goes a bit faster, you can for sure like take take rake number 20 and that's still gonna be enough. Ah. And the rakes further back, like from big boats are great as, as the water is completely clean out there and then you don't have to whitewash and it just feels smooth. Um, yeah, but for the small boats, the rakes in the back are too small. So my go-to rake would be the second one. Um, and I won't take the first one anymore or not, not that often. But I wouldn't suggest it as uh, sometimes the boats here tend to get slower um, and if you're high on the first rake and the boat gets slower or you just get immensely faster, oh, you, you might into run the into motor. the boat yeah. and you never want to run into the boat, like yeah. especially the old port engines and that yeah. stuff, it's just yeah, dangerous so don't do it. So earlier you were behind like or next to a really long boat and you were kind of riding next to the boat. Yeah. Like, almost like in front of the motor right like so yeah. so that works only on a on a really long boat or uh, what yeah kind of boats? yeah exactly yeah yeah i think there are two ferries right here which allow this and i would definitely not suggest it <laughs> um and then in this case like i think i was in the wake number four or something on the side of the boat and always like keep a safe distance which is one like if you completely fuck up go into the direction of the boat for a second and fail you're not allowed to be like any closer to the boat than, than 10 meters or something. Um, yeah, so just just play it safe. So always keep a certain distance. And the rakes on the side of the boat are usually not, not that great as the ones behind. By the way, this boat here, it's not, it's not that big, but sometimes the smaller boats like this one, I mean, it's still seven meters, so comparably a, a bigger boat, but it's not a yard. Um, if, they, if they ride like this, so if the trim is completely off and uh, the outboard shoots in the sky basically, yeah. um, they create huge rakes, it's incredible, right, like, right. this boat makes a better rake than, than the ferries, yeah. so that's... So, and you said you have your own boat too? Yeah. Do you ever put like water bags or make like the side thing that makes a better wake yeah, and try I, to you do I, that? I haven't yet actually, Yeah. Um, I'm planning on doing so, um, it's, a, it's a boat from 1980 with a newer outboard engine on it. And the good thing is that even with only one person in the boat that throws a great wake which is uh, huge enough to to stay in it without pumping and to make some nice calves like until the fifth wake or something um, but i'll definitely play around with ballast a bit and the wake mm. shapers would be a good thing too yeah. uh, but i prefer to take other people's boats you on like it. stealing other people's yeah, wakes, right? <laughs> also it's more fun like if you if you have to pump back and you always have the challenge and the the possibility for fuck ups that you that you might fall in it's yeah it's way more fun and so my boat like if i if i use it for the lessons here we use it obviously but um i'm not that much behind it myself like i mostly for myself i use it mostly to go out uh throw an anchor what's the name for anchor, it yeah yeah anchor and then just start from the boat and hijack other people's rake so <laughs> that's way more fun <laughs> yeah so, uh, so give us some pointers about learn. Like, how do you? What's the best way to learn how to dock start? And and do you? I mean, you said that you've taught some people to dock start and pump foil without any foiling experience. But, yeah, yeah. But yeah, what do you recommend for getting in, into this work? Yeah, first of all, it's good that you mentioned the point of foiling experience, as the the basic handling of the foil is like a huge pain in the ass if you've never done it before. So if you're already capable to to kite surf, wind surf, something. Uh, try kite foiling, ring foiling, whatever, you will probably learn that, that kind of thing faster just to get a feel of how the foil feels. So this would be like the number one how to learn it faster if you're already capable of using the foil on, on like a different medium. Um, and then if you come to the dock, if you don't have any experience, it will definitely take longer. But even if you have experience, like the initial of throwing the board and uh, jumping on it the right direction, having the right amount of speed, having the foot positioning dialed in, it's uh, pretty difficult at the beginning, so if I would have to give some pointers, first of all, care for your safety, like wear a rest, helmet, um, get a partner so that something happens, you always have someone to get you out of the water or whatever, like nothing is really going to happen, but to ju just to be safe. Um, and then the next thing would basically be, um, don't start by throwing the board in the water yourself, just if you have a dock which is like proper height, like this one for example, have your partner hold the board like this, just jump on it and uh, try to give 
all the all the force to the front so that you really jump on your front side so worst thing that happens is the foil is gonna go under you will fall to the front um yeah just do you put your back foot on first or like both yeah. feet at once or yeah, they're, they're, i've heard that like tip some yeah. really different philosophy so yeah um i prefer the back foot first thing but i um i got the impression that if i tell students to do the back foot first they tend to jump on it like in, in a matter like leaning backwards uh -huh. and it's really bad on the foil because it's, it's gonna do this and shoot up man. yeah exactly so nowadays i'm mostly telling people um to, to land with both feet at the same time and there's another debate like i'm goofy stance so the current thing is like i'm goofy so do i jump off i jump off with my right foot so basically in a motion like this and some people prefer to to make like a, a jump of uh, jumping off with the left foot and that's just however it feels more comfortable and uh, some yeah some dogs will allow it both ways but play around with that and then also um there's a lot of great content on youtube nowadays so check that out definitely um for safety things like for example keeping your head um hands above your head if you come up the foil sometimes tends to jump around or something and just for the sake of not swimming into it with your head forward just do this one just just for an example and there are some some safety measures which you can do in the beginning to, to get it going and then also the equipment i mean i saw a lot of guys um trying to start on way too small foils and for pumping here in, in sweet water this foil is uh, not that big even this is like 2100 square centimeters i think the cord is 2.7 centimeters thick so it's quite thick for mm. real um, and the bigger the foil, the easier your first steps are gonna be. So, yeah, start with the biggest foil around and uh, just try to glide a few meters. If you're gonna try to start on a, I don't know, I saw this guy, um, just the ring tips, something. He made like a, um, a beach start on a really small Kojira. No. If you try to start a foil like that from the dock for the first time, you will be really frustrated and have to, I don't know, try out for five years before you get it going. <laughs> While a foil like this will definitely make it easier. And then okay. also for the lake, I mean, for the capturing the boat rakes, um, the rakes are not really fast. So going with a fast foil might be a lot of fun, but if you're way faster than the rake, it, it's not beneficial as uh, you'll just go faster than the rakes and you'll lose basically every rake. So mm -hmm. the more beginner friendly setups will, will be quite some more fun <laughs> okay and you also give lessons right on pump foiling yeah, and so exactly. on so if somebody's in berlin they want to learn how to pump foil where can they find you yeah for sure uh, just google foil club berlin i'll put um, it in the link uh, link in the description below also. yeah perfect okay. yeah. thanks mate <laughs> yeah you told me earlier it takes like 15 sessions or something before you can master it yeah and that's learning from scratch without having any foil experience yeah but that that yeah it, it really depends, I would say, if you would say what it correlates with, it would be age and experiences in front. Yeah. And um, for example, we have a girl here, Anna, shout out to Anna, she's a good surfer. She has like a surf skate sponsor, Joel Skates, and she learned crazy fast, like five sessions and she was going, I don't know, 50 meters or something. Wow. Um, but she's, she had a lot of surfing experience prior, um, a lot of surf skating experience and is overall super fit. Um, and then we have people who try it and it takes them like 60 sessions to get their first meters. Um, but if you consider yourself a rudderly fit person with a water sport background, and I mean there are not, there are not a lot of people who are seriously about uh, learning pump foiling, which don't have some type of a water sport background, like mm -hmm. or board sport, like at least snowboarding or something. Um, and I think on average it would be 30, 30 sessions something and you will get it going that it's fun in a way. session. <laughs> so, so that's quite So, and then each session is like how many times starting? Maybe like 50 times, 100 times each, each session, something like that? Because yeah, I've heard people say you need to like 100 times, but it sounds like you need more like 500 yeah. or 1,000 yeah, starts. I, I, I think the, the people who try it in your region are a bit biased because they're all pretty good surfers. So yeah, they, they might, already know how to foil, yeah. Yeah, that's they, true. they will get it way faster. I think the problem is controlling the foil, not the dock start. Mm. Because the dock start maybe takes... I would say the dock start takes 50 tries and you'll, I mean, if your foil is dialed out somewhat and you push it, it runs in a way and mm -hmm. for example this one isn't dialed in perfectly so if you push it a bit further it will still go but it will shoot out at some point. 
but the, the good that's actually is, a good point so like because i think early on people said when you have a really small board you want to put the foil as far back as possible but you actually want the board to be balanced so the weight of yeah. the board balances um over the center of the foil as well so it's, it yeah. flies by itself exactly. basically, yeah. the, the, the point that it flies by itself it's not that important um, but if you push it for the dock start and you have a foil which goes immediately down. Mm -hmm. If the nose is heavy, oh yeah. Yeah, it's going to be really difficult to ah, pop up yeah. the end. That makes so sense. that's why, why this is, has somewhat of an important role to, to dive so it out. So on the your end. foil, like I guess this is the master here, where do you pl try to pla um, place your feet when you jump on it? Like where's your back foot and your front foot? Um, just throw with your hands, like where would you? Usually the back foot would be exactly over over the base plate. Okay. And the front front foot somewhere inside of here. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of different philosophies of how, how people stay on it. I saw seen some guys who are completely off center on the way. I like it a bit more central. And then a lot of guys um, tend to have the foil completely in the back. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't like it. I don't like it at all actually. And that's due to the fact like um, first of all like the, the main point of lift on this foil would be I think somewhere around here. Yeah. So the, the middle position, like the, the, it, it's not really the center of gravity, but, but the mean point of lift yeah. is somewhere in this direction. So if you have the foil too far back, that it's nose heavy and, and it dives, it wants exactly. to dive down. And then, yeah. and then your back foot, like, yeah, it's, it's a bit messed up if your back foot is here, your back foot is this far from, from the middle point. Mm. And your front foot is like this far. So your back foot will have a lot of more pressure, mm. especially in pump foil, and you feel this quite quick, like, um, I think the longest video I have of me pumping this setup is uh, a minute and 55 mm -hmm. and uh, you get really heavy on the back leg but if you have a chance to get the back leg a bit further um, to the to the back side it gets a bit more front leg heavy yeah and so, I so you can relax your back leg a little bit more yeah exactly yeah, because that's... it burns out extremely fast yeah that's, that's, that's the same with wing foiling too you want to have it balanced between your legs more or less yeah, yeah. and then also oh. I, I think if you want to go like really tiny curves it's nice to, to have some room for the back foot to be further more on the back so you can push a bit harder. So you can pivot around the mass and stuff. Yeah. Like, yeah. And then I, I feel like I have more of a... Um, it's not leverage, like a, a größer hebel. Like I, I just leverage, have more, yeah. Yeah, more, leverage. more power on the back. So yeah, I really prefer that. And then for the cool. broad length, um, when starting, there are also like some, some different philosophies, but um, I think a bit bigger board will make it easier. Um, as you won't have so much fuck up like landing on the sides and it will look a bit safer. Um, yeah, but just a relatively small board will make the pump holding easier as the nose dives don't hurt you so much. Like with a big board you, you get it in and the ride is basically over and um, you have a lot more room to, to fuck up in that, in that sense. And then also it's amazingly stiff. Like you, you completely feel the board, the direction is almost immediate. Um, yeah, and we don't need the volume. I mean, we can sadly not pedal into wakes here, mm -hmm. obviously. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And There's these, some these, seaweed, nasty yeah, stuff. <laughs> these workers are really, really <laughs> annoying. Yeah. yeah. So you're, you're right next to the um, the police here, the boat police. Um, so do they ever say anything? Is there like I guess they, do they not not really know what to do with you or? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think what the point happens? is, I'm, until now, I'm the only person like getting out uh, further and in, in a lot of breaks here. So yeah, and they just tolerate you. Yeah, no, it's, still it's tolerating, but uh, Germany sometimes tends to get a bit strange regulations. Yeah, and in Sachsen, they um, they are forbidding points right now oh. due to the fact that they are um, possible to exceed the uh, the speed limit. <laughs> which is kind of a stupid rule because like every windsurfer of the wind blows every yeah every sports boat here every sailing boat is possible to go faster than than what's allowed so yeah that's just making, making up rules huh yeah exactly but we can we can provide it and um, i mean we don't hurt anyone we are yeah i think really we look for the people here like there's there's no way we endanger someone so that's yeah. quite cool and the water police um, they don't like the wing foilers so much. Um, they told me that the wing foilers are a bit like if they go on the lake, you you never really know where they're gonna go next. But 99% of the pump foilers, which use these spots here, maybe go out 50 meters and that's it. So yeah. they never get into the. Except for you, who goes all the way down there and then yeah. all the way over there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've never done that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Excellent.
Yeah, but that's that's good. Let's let's see what will come up if, if we have like a lot of more people doing it here. But yeah. I so how how many people can actually um, dock start here in Berlin? Like how many locals can can do this? So um, I started this WhatsApp group, um, or three other guys with me started it, and uh, we've been filling it up since then. And we have uh, 50 active foilers here now. And I would say people who can properly dock start on this side of Berlin, like we have the east side, like the city foilers, shout outs, uh, great guys too. So if you're yeah. the east side of Berlin, hit them up. Yeah. Um, I don't know him, how many they are um, now capable of properly dock starting. But here on the west side, it's around about 10 guys. Okay. So already quite something. I mean, it's great to have a community because two years ago we've been two persons. So not really that much, but yeah. It's getting bigger. <laughs> okay. Well, excellent. Well, thanks so much for for your time, Leo. Yeah, thanks, thanks for being for interest, yeah, <laughs> and uh, thanks for showing us what you what you're capable of. Very impressive. <laughs> thanks, All right. Man. Thank you. Aloha. Appreciate it. <laughs>